Welcome back to The Takeaway. I'm Tansy Navega, and we're continuing our coverage of settlement deals from opioid distributors and manufacturers now. And I'm joined by North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein. Attorney General Stein has been one of four state attorneys general working to reach a $48 billion settlement from opioid distributors Amerisource Bergen, Cardinal Health, and McKesson Corporation, and manufacturers Johnson & Johnson and Teva. The settlement would cover more than 2,300 cases against these companies that are part of a massive consolidated lawsuit. Attorney General Stein, thanks for being on The Takeaway. Tanzina, it's a pleasure to be with you. So you and others have been pushing for a larger collective settlement worth $48 billion. That's billion with a B. What would the settlement entail? It would entail both cash and non-cash all dedicated to trying to help people who are sick with opioid addiction. This is an absolutely devastating crisis, and it's affecting communities all across this country, uh, including here in North Carolina, where uh, families are struggling, communities are are suffering with their budgets, uh, and individuals are sick and too many are dying. We lose about five people every day to an opioid overdose, and so it is imperative that we get the resources we need so we can start helping people who are sick because of the acts of these drug companies. Uh, the, the $48 billion includes $22 billion in cash payments over time to go to abatement activities, anything that can help people uh, who are sick, and then um, $26 billion in products and services, mainly medication-assisted drugs, uh, Suboxone, which is the leading drug for people sick with opioid addiction, and it will help them get healthy. And so this is a way for us to bring to bear real resources that can make a difference in people's lives. Yeah, one of the big questions, as we heard in the previous segment here, is to make sure that the money actually goes to uh, what it's intended to go to, Attorney General. What steps can be taken to ensure that that happens, that the money goes to those most directly impacted by the opioid epidemic rather than other parts of the state budget? Yes, I I could not agree more. I've seen it here, even in my home state of North Carolina. The the legislature took our health and wellness trust, which was dedicated to promote community health as a result of the tobacco settlement 20 years ago, uh, and after about 12, 13 years, they just took it and absorbed it into the state budget. So I share those concerns uh, deeply. And so the way we're proposing to structure this is to have what we call buckets. Uh, There are a bunch of counties and cities that have sued. There are a a number of states that have sued. Uh, And so each of those groups would get some amount of money, but the majority of the money would go to what we call the Common Abatement Fund. And these would be dedicated to activities that help people. Either it helps people move from uh, prison into drug treatment programs, it helps get naloxone in the communities to keep people alive. It funds treatment uh, programs for people who are sick. Anything that is a a long list of potential uh, acceptable activities that go to address the crisis. That's why we're calling it an abatement fund. And even the state and the county funds uh, need to be spent on abatement. Uh, And that that is an important priority for us all. In response to your announcement of a tentative agreement, Paul J. Hanley, Jr., who is a lawyer that represents multiple cities and counties in their lawsuits against opioid companies, had a skeptical response. He told the New York Times, and I'm quoting here, the proposed deal put forth is nothing more than wishful thinking on the part of AGs who were 20 months too late to this party. Attorney General Stein, what's your response to that criticism? Well, I, I, you know, it, he has a specific agenda and he has certain clients and I'm sure he wants his clients to get, uh, you know, to win the lottery. And basically when you have individual counties and cities that are suing, those two counties in Ohio, they, they won the lottery. And there's absolutely no way, if you were to liquidate every single one of these drug companies and come up with every dollar of value, um, you would not be able to solve the problem. And we would not be able to come up with the the sums that the first counties and cities are going to earn in their litigation. 
this is not a problem that's limited to Cuyahoga County in Ohio. This is a national problem. And so what we have to do is maximize the amount of resources that we can extract from these companies and then distribute it in a rational and fair way to have the maximum impact on people's lives but also that's fair and gets sent around the country. I mean, if we just allow these cities and counties to go forward with each of their lawsuits and they don't participate in a national settlement, what will happen is that they will each win massive settlements and then the companies will be bankrupt. So seven or eight jurisdictions will get all of the money, leaving the rest of the entire nation uh, in the dark. And these Drug distributors are absolutely critical to the health care system in the United States. The, the Cardinal McKesson and the Marisource Bergen distribute 80, 90 percent of every pharmaceutical from the manufacturers to the pharmacy. And, I mean, opioids is just one drug. Think of every single drug that happens in this country. It goes through those three companies. And if we bankrupt them, we run the risk of disrupting the entire health care delivery in the United States, which is something that I refuse to do. Purdue Pharma, the makers of OxyContin, reached a tentative deal last month that would cost the owners of the company, the Sackler family, uh, $3 billion of their own money and would also see them give up ownership of the company. To what you were just saying, Attorney General, what do you think of that deal? I didn't think it was enough. I did not think the Sackler family was held sufficiently accountable. They extracted billions out of this company, throwing the company into bankruptcy, and now they're trying to shield their private assets in the process, and that's wrong. They need to step up in a meaningful way to address this crisis because I believe that they are as or more responsible than any other people in the country to, the, to what's happening. We've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, one thing that's happened recently with these settlements is that a lot of these companies are not having their day in court and are not being forced to admit guilt. Uh, do you believe that that should happen, that there should be? Is that a flaw in this approach to push settlements instead of trials? Well, I think that what's important is to try to save people's lives and to do it in a in a urgent fashion. And we can litigate these matters for years and years and years, uh, and then hopefully someday at the end of the rainbow get money. But meanwhile, thousands of my North Carolina residents are going to be dead, and I, I refuse to accept that. I, I do accept that the documents – need to be made public and part of a public understanding of what happened. But I think there's no question the, the way forward is a national resolution that brings meaningful resources distributed in a fair and, and rational manner. Attorney General Josh Stein, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for your interest.